part two. Part two. That Short the, part the, two. Uh, uh, the sea monsters yes. ask a purely representational question. Uh, what, what do they symbolize for you, those two sea monsters? Excuse me while I giggle. Um, <laughs> but for years, ever since my very first presentation, which was at this campus Christian ministry that you near know, the UW campus that he was director of at the yeah. time, yeah. I've always thrown questions about the wings and the wings works and I'll yeah. ask about the sea monsters back at the audience. Yes. You're the audience. Right. You're the what audience. does it mean? What, what do you, are, think, Tom, what do you right? think the sea monsters? Why might I have done them? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, there's this was this. The, what's represented here in the, in the core of it, as you say, is is a could be like a coffin, could be like a, mm. Um, mm. A, you know, this is obviously a, a representation of, of the detritus of of humanity in the wake of the Holocaust, and um, then these monsters maybe are the are the deep motivations for the for the war and the hatred and the Holocaust itself. I don't know. That's an interesting interpretation. It is. Brooke? Uh, Akiva, you have resisted, wonderfully, you have resisted answering that <laughs> that kind of question for many years. Well, I, can, I actually do answer them on equation. I, and I wrote, an, I wrote a, an unpublished op-ed called Why Jewish Angels, which I'll, I'll put on the new website. Um, I, this, will, ah. this will give you a reminder to look for I'm it. I'm looking forward to that. Because I, I wrote it back around 1993, low battery. low battery. I wrote it in response to critical questions addressed to me by a, one or two Jewish people at the time. Is, yeah. They're saying, why you have angels? Angels are Christian iconographic. Yes, and yes. I, I completely refuted that notion. Mm -hmm. Christian um, interpretations and visual depictions of angels grow out of Judaic. They do indeed. And I have all That's kinds right. of literary and other sources they're, to, to back that up. They're prominent in Torah and they're but, prominent in, in apocryphal work. And so but but I, I will say this, this, being an adult audience as opposed to an audience, let's say, with second graders, the sea monsters yeah. in particular, I had done, I did, um, two drawings in early 2017 about the um, sailing ship St. Louis. And one's called the, the Sea Monsters and the Sailing Ship St. Louis. You've actually seen that. Another one's called the Sea Beasties and the Sailing Ship St. Louis. And I did them with all the anti-immigration attacks going on okay. in the United States with the Republicans and counterparts in Europe and Britain and so on. Yes. I wanted to do something that's pro-immigration, Criticize, visually addressing this type of bigotry, which I could use in teaching young children. Mm. And so my idea for this, my thinking conscious, subconscious, unconscious, was that um, sea monsters, this is going to go a long way at, let's say, at a museum exhibit, if teachers are bringing in classes or at PowerPoint presentations in schools, whatever, to have this type of work with young children. Um, that, that was my intent. So, um, and uh, other kind of more intellectual, ethereal type interpretation, I'll leave that for... Um, right, for there's, there's no wrong way to talk about <laughs> Right, there's no wrong answer. Yeah, and... Tom, uh, I'm so glad you asked the question. Something about the way you asked it, and, and it's making you look at these two figures. They're the largest figures in the work, and in the mosaic part. In the it. mosaic part, yeah. Well, but I mean, okay. it, but it frames the the subject. They go mm -hmm. from top to bottom, right. yes. within within the the wooden yeah, and, and all, metal frame. All of, this is something I've noticed as a regular theme, um, well, the motif in your work is yes. that a framing, mm -hmm. that everything. It's not just that there's a frame around the work. It's that the working that the frame is incorporated into the work. Yes. It's it's part of the work. And so And there are frames within frames. Yeah, frames within frames as Good well. Good job. Yeah. And so I see that um, you know the frame itself is commenting on what's being framed and what's being framed is commenting on the frame within it. Um, going on. So I mean that's the that's what I'm seeing here. And so this is unavoidably for for a person who's thinking about the deeper meaning of things, 
unavoidably comments on what's inside <sighs> the frame in the center, the central subject. I also see, you know, there's so many toy elements in this piece, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, Good. Things like the dice and things like the little, the fishy and the horsey and I think, you oh, know, the little right. things. That's right. In I the can't picture. resist having a wild to draw. Wild gefilte, gefilte fish. fish. I, I love the, the wild, wild gefilte. gefilte. That's right. Yeah. It's there. Uh, other cre and birds mm -hmm. here and there will, and will there appear. And often yeah. birds in your work. The drum. Yeah. So I mean, this is uh, the drum is actually a child, uh, the cup. there's a childishness yeah. about this work. So look at the photo. Oh, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So when I say there's a childishness about this work, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it's also for an adult viewer, it makes it so poignant because the subject is also absolutely not childish. That's huh. right. Huh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all very much. You're hired, by the way, to write an article. <laughs> I'm glad.